the real truth is we have to get our love and attachments from a wider family, the wider human family. And now that you're open and with the art, the same openness is there for the other. Not empty, it's open. In other words, there's readiness. Now that you made the shift, it's waiting in the wings. Open, and not to be afraid of what comes in, that you're strong enough when something is toxic, you'll know to push it away or put up your boundary. Otherwise, when we feel very wounded and we close all up and have all the defenses up, the good things can't come in either, whether it's love or creativity or money or offers or what. Do you understand? So what happened is you let down your barriers. And the only reason we need barriers, I always call it the opaque window. You know, you can make it transparent to the right people. And if you not feel toxicity, you make it opaque or you put the curtain down, you know? And it's very subtle, but it, you feel more strong that you can do that now. And the universe is feeling it, so opportunities are coming. The thing is you're accepting your emotion, frustration, unhappiness, happiness, joy. When you feel everything, you're whole. Because emotions go away, they're fleeting. And what you're doing is you're letting yourself feel your emotions so you're alive. You're alive. If you can only feel one emotion, sorrow. But you're supposed to feel all of them. So you're learning to welcome all the feelings, have them, use them in your art, not be afraid of frustration or distress or, you know, feeling wounded sometimes, right? And also our emotions tell us what to do. Should I do something about this or not? Shall I say something? You wouldn't be able to have choices if you only had one emotion all the time. Do you notice that when you're open to everything, even unpleasant feelings of frustration, even mild discomfort, emotional discomfort, that you're alive and you're not alive when you're trying to press down emotions because when you press down anything you press it all down happiness joy elation you press it it all goes away i think of it as a tank moving over everything it's not going to stay with you a long time the reason a depressed person stays depressed except for hereditary biological depression the reason is because they keep thinking the same one thing over and over again I can't get out of this, I can't get out of this, I'm stuck in it. Whatever that, you know, the same old thought. When you have a variety of feelings, you're alive. And the unpleasant ones won't stay. They dissipate, like sweat, tears, and urine. Out. Don't be afraid of unpleasant emotions. They don't last forever. They sometimes last a split second or half a day. It could be annoying. So when you're not feeling that way, give yourself a break. Have a cup of tea, meditate. Don't do as much as you would do on a day when you feel elated. That's all. It goes away. So sometimes when a person has a low mood, they start thinking bad things about themselves. No, it may be you didn't sleep enough, or you're hungry, or you're, somebody said something that hurt you and you don't know what to do with it, so you feel a little bad. But don't, you don't, you know, let yourself have the feeling, give yourself a break, relax. Everything doesn't have to be so intense. You'll catch up another day when your mood is a bit higher. Because sometimes you think you're supposed to always be going at the same pace. Well, that's fine, but if you're not feeling you have to give yourself some, I know now, even physically, there's things I just can't do. I can't walk well, I have pain. And in between things I have to lay down, I have to rest. I don't like that emotionally, but I know I have to do that. You have to learn to take breaks, and maybe you could take them before you feel bad. Even when you're doing good things, you may be doing too much. The way you work is probably very intense and very hard. Now you stop being hard on yourself, and you have to learn how to time the breaks, physical breaks and meditate, mental. When you get your second wind, more ideas come. The ideas will open up. You don't lose anything by taking a break. Creativity can be a drug. But I like to say that that inner world is also real for the creative person. We dip into it, use it, and come back out. We have two worlds. So that inner world, especially for artists, is real. Is as real as the outside. There's nothing to be ashamed of. But the fact is, you're not crazy. You can come back out of it. The average person is afraid to go in there. That's deep. Images, pictures, bad things, traumas going by, but I'm missing it if I'm going directly down to the to the deepest basement where you need to be to do the creative. You're bypassing all the traumas. You're going past the need for regularity and doing your creative process. There's a lot of trauma to confront on your way down. 
So by doing it all the time, that's good. Freud said they want me to take away all the, some of their discomfort, but they want to keep their neurosis. Not because you like it, but because it's familiar. Remember, I'd rather have the enemy I know than the friend I don't know. These other distresses inside me that no longer, they don't work. Turn them into some creative product. Letting go of things that are toxic, that have been pain, causing a great pain, and that you've made a sh big shift that is letting good things in. The thing we most fear is generally something good. Next, what will they expect of me next? Now what do they want from me? Do you get that it's about uh, new things coming in and that same anticipatory fear is, uh, it's not that I'm losing myself, I'm losing the old, more defended self. The house is more open. Things are coming in, close one door and three doors open. Without that loss, you wouldn't have these opportunities. I think life is just a series of challenges that you solve. And if you didn't have challenges, you wouldn't be alive. And if you didn't have all your feelings, you wouldn't feel alive. So welcome when you feel frustrated or hungry or tired or a misery at the moment or a down mood because that will also let the happy moods in and the other things in. Have your full range, a rainbow of, that's who we are, the full spectrum of emotions. You realize you're gifted, you have multi, your various selves, right? You're, you're a very varied human being, you're not unidimensional. So you're gonna feel these feelings. If you didn't have these thoughts, you, the people have a boring life who don't go through what you've been going through. Person who just does the same thing every day, boring. Enthusiasm is the opposite of depression. And I think boredom cuts down on our enthusiasm. Your life is very rich, full of things. So you have to feel all your feelings, welcome them. And if they're unpleasant, that's temporary, just like happiness is temporary. And when you feel what you're feeling, it moves on to the next emotion. And when you try to push it out of your awareness, it stays, because you're focused on, gotta get rid of this, gotta get rid of this. And anyway, each emotion is giving us a clue about something we're going through. When you have a goal, and you're on that path toward that goal, there are things you know are secondary or tertiary you want to let go of. What's secondary is clear to you. The other way, we're very scattered, and we do too much here or there, or focus on something, and then we don't get what we want because we're scattered all over the place. You're doing fine. You opened yourself up to allow things in. You are the same person, but you're feeling different about yourself now. You're confident, you're open when you're not hiding from yourself. Isn't that nice? Don't you think that uh, you are a big shot doing painting? A lot of people can't paint. If you leave even the painting out, I have a feeling your new attitude about yourself. I have a feeling you would have gotten the same thing because it's there's something about you that's coming across that's positivizing the people's reactions toward you. Do you get it? That when you accept yourself, everybody else around you accepts you. When you're good to yourself, other people treat you nicely. I'm a good artist, I'm a great artist. <laughs> you are you, fully. So don't be surprised when people treat you nicely when you just have a good inner sense. You're learning, you know? You stop negatively criticizing yourself. Do you notice that you're lighter to just be you without the added stuff, the pain and the other stuff that that doesn't mean it won't come back to us on, on low moments or hungry moments or disappointed moments. It comes back a bit, but it won't be as intense or as hurtful because you also allowed yourself to enjoy this rather than criticizing yourself. In the past, you, sometimes you would have mixed emotions when you had certain successes. You would tell me, now I'm hearing you're getting pure joy. The moment that you're going through something good, it will... Uh, infuse other moments. When you feel you love yourself, other people like you better. <laughs> it's a strange phenomenon. We get we get more by caring for ourselves more, by accepting ourselves. Say 10 nice things about yourself each day. You don't have to be sick to be an artist. You don't have to live in a cold water atelier to be, you know. In fact, that probably impedes it because that slows you. Certain things <laughs> slow you up from producing what you need to produce. You made this happen nicely that way by just being you, by not being afraid to be you. You did overcome, so it's not hopeless, you know? And, and that you produced it, fully accepting yourself and loving yourself. A genuine feeling of self-worth, 
It's amazing. It's an amazing image. 